For the past 20 years, I've been a die-hard Apple user. My first Mac was an iBook G4 that I got in November of 2003. And ever since then, I haven't looked back, and I've always been using Mac. So in the past two or three years, ever since Apple Silicon, for whatever reason, I decided that I really wanted an x86 system, mostly because I just want to experiment with Linux and just try out different operating systems. So what I did is that for my birthday, I finally did something about it. And I picked up this IBM ThinkPad T14 Gen 2. So this is not going to be a review of this ThinkPad. It's basically going to be a comparison between the ThinkPad and the user experience that I get out of the Lenovo laptop compared to my Mac back there. So I'm going to go over some of the key features and the things that PC laptops in general have to work on. Now granted, I've, this is my first PC in 20 years, so I can't really let that be representative of the entire PC side of things. But I do want to strike some comparisons between what I get from the ThinkPad compared to my MacBook Air. Now I can't do a Mac versus Windows type of comparison because I installed Linux over the Windows partition before I made a USB recovery key for Windows. And the only way you can create that key is you need a computer running x86 and Windows, use the download tool and to put Windows 11 back onto that partition. So I failed to do that and right now I am running Manjaro Linux on top of the ThinkPad. So I understand that Manjaro Linux is a bit of a beginner's uh, distribution, but I really don't plan on doing anything hardcore on this IBM lap or ThinkPad because I'm still going to do all of the heavy lifting, all of the video editing is going to be done on my Mac. So really, this, this system here, this Lenovo ThinkPad, I just really have it to tinker around with it. And if I do need anything that requires x86, and if it's available on Linux, I'm going to be using this computer for that. So in terms of the software comparison, I can't really do, uh, do anything between it. And I'm not really going to focus on the Linux operating system here because quite honestly, I don't know enough about Linux and I haven't played with it enough to really come to any conclusions about the operating system. But I will say that I do favor Linux over Windows and even a little bit over Mac OS because Linux is really light on your hardware resources. I have 32 gigs of RAM in the Linux machine. And really, that is complete overkill because I've seen the system boot up and run up and uh, run Firefox with a couple of tabs. Maybe I'll run my music player in the background. And it all does it under four gigabytes of memory usage. If I were to do the same thing on my MacBook, I'd easily be running into about seven or eight gigs of memory usage. And that has 16 gigs of RAM. So really, 32 gigs for what I do or for what basic, basic stuff, 32 gigs is way overkill. So that's just my opinion on the Linux operating system. It's lightweight, it's fast, it's stable. And there are a lot of things that I really like about the Linux kernel compared to Mac OS. But um, once again, software is going to be for a different video. And today I'm just going to focus on the hardware. In my opinion, in order for a laptop to be worth its weight in salt, it has to excel in these four areas. First up is build quality. Second is the quality of the display the utility of the keyboard, and the smoothness of the trap hat or pointing device. Now this ThinkPad checks off three out of those four boxes. However, because it is lacking in one area, this is a computer that is really hard for me to use and get comfortable with, and I'm going to get into that right now. So when it comes to build quality, ThinkPads are built like tanks, and I've known this for quite a long time. Now when I was a kid, when I believe I was about 12 or 14 years old or something like that, I had an OG IBM ThinkPad. And that, that ThinkPad was built like a tank. And I'm glad to say that even after all of these years, after many decades of coming back to a ThinkPad, I can say that the build quality on this ThinkPad is just simply impeccable. I thought it was going to be cheap. I thought the chassis was going to flex. I thought I was going to have problems with the display. But to my surprise, and I'm very happily surprised about it, none of those things happen. And this is just a great build, high quality laptop. And if you notice one thing about this is that the color of this thing is pretty badass and awesome. It's got a nice black matte display, which is also a very heavy fingerprint magnet. But despite of that, the aesthetic of this ThinkPad right here, 
I think is pretty damn sick. And I really wish Apple would just go all out and have the balls just to make a basic black MacBook. I know the thing is going uh, to attract a lot of fingerprints, but man, when I saw this thing out of the package first try, I was like, this is a sick looking laptop. And because of that, the black color, the color scheme on this thing is pretty damn awesome. Now, one thing that I don't like about this is, or one thing I got spoiled with the MacBook, is the fact that I cannot open this with one thumb. So I got to come down here and I got to use both hands to open the display. I know that may not seem like a big deal, but it really is a good quality of life issue. And if you're using any MacBook from the Air to the 15 inch to the MacBook Pros, I'm pretty certain you can open all of those laptops with one finger. You can't do it with this. It's a little, it's a little bit tricky, but honestly, it doesn't matter that much. But I'm just saying in terms of a, a, a premium feel to it, it is nice to be able to open your laptop with one finger. So when you come in into here, um, in terms of the, the uh, display, this right here is only a 1080p 16 by 9 display. But this is a really good display. I thought I would have issues with the pixel density. But when I look at the output of the display, I really think the clarity of it and the sharpness of it, it almost rivals the retina display on my MacBook Air. Now granted, this display is not the brightest. It comes in at 300 nits of brightness. My MacBook Air comes in at 400 nits of brightness. But I know for a fact that if I were trying to use this outside, I wouldn't be able to really see the screen and that would be a problem. So because of that, that is just the one big drawback to the display. But as you can see, it's very crisp and sharp. It's got that 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So at least when you watch YouTube videos, you're not going to see the black bars. So I really don't mind a 16 by 9 display, but I do understand on, on a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, you can see more of your windows and you have more vertical screen space. And depending on what you do, that's going to make a difference as to, as to how well you see the display on either system. So the display, it nails it on the display as well. Keyboard. ThinkPad uh, keyboards are just legendary. Uh, they are basically the gold standard when it comes to using the keyboard. And I really like the utility of this keyboard because the keys are very tactile. You got a good amount of travel to it. And it's very accurate and precise. So there's nothing I can say badly about this keyboard. And comparing this keyboard to my MacBook keyboard, I definitely do prefer using this keyboard over my MacBook Airs. So in terms of the keyboard, it nails it on that. Now, this is where it's going to let me down. And this is the primary reason why I'm not using this ThinkPad as my daily driver. So, the trackpad. Now, the thing about the trackpad, I think a lot of it comes down more so to the drivers and the software, more so than the actual hardware. First off, the thing, the real stumbling back block with this trackpad is the scrolling, the smoothness of the scrolling, as well as the clickability of the trackpad. So when I try scrolling down a web page using this trackpad, I find that it's really jittery. It's all over the place. It's really inconsistent in terms of being able to register my gestures on the, on the trackpad. It's really not a good experience. And even with clicking and right clicking, sometimes I think I'm going to miss the click. So what I had to do is I had to utilize tap to click on the trackpad in order to register when I want to click on the thing. So that's one thing where it fails. It fails hard when it comes to the trackpad mostly because of the software and the drivers and the way it, which it scrolls down web pages, and also because that I have to resort to tap to click. That's not the best way to use a trackpad at all in either Windows or, I, or, uh, or Linux, in my opinion. So I really dislike that, and because of that, using that trackpad on this kind of sucks, and that's why I, have, why I cannot use this as my daily driver. Another thing, too, the speakers are crap. All right. The speakers on this ThinkPad are absolute crap. Um, it's tinny. It doesn't get very loud. There's no stereo separation. I absolutely cannot watch uh, anything on this laptop through the uh, built-in speakers. So the only way that I'm able to survive with the speakers is if I plug it, I plug it into my external speakers. And because of that, there's no way I can watch videos on top of this computer or watch any type of movies because the speakers are actually just pretty damn awful. Now, when it comes to the internals, this is where you see a difference, the biggest difference. 
between any PC laptop and what you can and cannot do on the Mac. So this laptop here, let's, um, it comes, it came with, it came to me with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, and really for the price that I got this for, I'll get to the pricing at the end, but for the amount of money that I spent on this, I think I got a really good deal. It has a Ryzen 5 series CPU, so that's the six core CPU running on 12 threads. And because of that, with Linux being such a lightweight operating system, I've never really had to spike the, the CPU in inside of this uh, computer. Granted, I'm not doing anything really intense. All I'm doing on it is watching movies, playing back music, running Firefox, and that's about it. I'm not even code compiling on this thing. So I'm certain if I were compiling code on this, it would be more of an issue. But honestly, the power with that six core Ryzen CPU, no, it's good enough. It, it handles, it doesn't slow down. So that's just one thing good that I like about it. I like the fact that it has 12 threads total because the M1 MacBook Air has a total of eight threads. So, or in other words, four performance cores and four high efficiency cores. So you have uh, eight threads going on at the same time. With hyper-threading or AMD's version of, of hyper-threading, you get 12 threads at the same time with this. And the, the kernel or the scheduler or, or whatever Linux does with this system, it does it very efficiently. And that's one thing I really like about the Linux operating system. So there's your CPU, there's your memory. So the memory is upgradable and I did take advantage of that. So unlike the Mac, as I said, this came with 16 gigs of RAM. What I was able to do is I got another 16 gig stick, I put it in here and I went all the way out to 32 gigabytes of RAM. You know how much that costs? $33. How much does that cost on the Mac? 200. So, I mean, the moment I got this laptop in my hands and looked at the specs, I was like, man, Apple's really ripping this off here. And you really know it. Once you actually hold a PC in your hands and you see what you can do in terms of upgrades, you realize that Apple is just screwing with everybody. So that's what I really like about this too, the upgradability. The NVMe drive is completely removable. So if I want to go up to one or two terabytes, maybe four terabytes, I can definitely do it in this. You want to upgrade the, uh, the, the SSD inside of any Mac? Expect to, send, to spend 400, 600. I mean, Apple's pricing on the SSDs are just completely insane, out of line, out of touch, freaking arrogant on them to charge that kind of money for an upgrade. Whereas with this, it's affordable, it's cheap, it's decent. And overall, as I said, this is a decent laptop. The only reason, as I said, is because of the, the trackpad is absolute crap. But outside of that, this is an awesome uh, Mac, I mean, ThinkPad. So I'm not really going to be using this outside anywhere. I'm just going to basically put it on my desk, hook it up to my speakers, and that's about it. That's all it's going to do. So the good thing about the MacBook is it nails all four of those boxes. Build quality, trackpad, keyboard, display. It gets it, it, it gets it right. It gets everything right. And to me, that's the biggest difference between enjoying using the laptop versus trying to struggle and push your way through something that is not fully integrated and developed. So let's talk about price. Now, this is an IBM ThinkPad uh, 14S or 14T, and this is the Generation 2. So this laptop came out in 2021, I believe, in the middle of 2021. So it is an older laptop, but I was able to pick this up brand new. And I think because it is an older machine, I got it at a really good price. I got it off of Amazon for $700. And when I incorporate the upgrade of the RAM to this, that brings it around to about $730, $740 for 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and everything else that comes in this. So I got this for a really good price. What does my MacBook Air come with? One terabyte of storage. Yeah, that's more. But that upgrade cost me an additional $200. To upgrade from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigs of unified memory in the MacBook Air, that cost me another $200. So when I got done finally specking out and everything with it, I think I spent about $1,439 on that MacBook Air. It's quite a bit of money. It is quite a bit of money for what it is. And with this, as I said, I got this out of the gate with 32 gigs for about $730. 
So we're literally talking about you could almost buy two of these ThinkPads for the price of one of those. And that just goes to illustrate how crazy Apple's pricing is. And when I got a hold of this ThinkPad, I made a video saying that Apple is basically screwing all of us. And the motivation for making this video, making that video, is because of the quality, uh, is because of the value and the, what you get for the money with this IBM ThinkPad. And remember, this is the first PC that I've owned in over 20 years. And I was just living in a land of ignorance is bliss, so I didn't know any better how well the how much better value you get on the PC side. But going back to it again, that thing checks off all the boxes. And it's a premium product. It's made out of aluminum. That thing is not going to get warped or melted or anything like that. There's no rubber on top of the in, in, in the build quality that's going to degrade. Because, you know, like the Dell, I've seen this one video where a Dell laptop had like this, this fake ass like carbon fiber uh, build to it, but it was really just rubber. And over time, that rubber deteriorated and turned into this disgusting goop of just crap. So you're not going to do that on a MacBook because they are made out of metal. Metal. No other company is making their computers out of metal. Maybe Razer, or I can't think of any of them, but definitely not so much not so much Lenovo. And maybe Razer is the only one that makes their computers out of metal. Maybe MSI. See, I really don't know much on the PC side as it shows. But the build quality on my MacBook Air, it's going to last forever. I don't have to worry about it. And... The thing about this ThinkPad is, yes, the build quality is absolutely there. I have zero faults or zero knocks in the build quality of this ThinkPad. And that's something that surprised me because I thought it would be crappy and cheap and plasticky. None of that at all. It's got a very good frame. The keyboard doesn't flex. The display doesn't flex. This is an awesome build of a laptop. So that's it, right? So that's, that's just my comparison. The software side running Linux. The hardware running in this ThinkPad, the pricing, and the amount of money to spend on the upgrades, the ease of use, the ease of getting into this thing and just being able to run your own upgrades. Really, this is a really awesome system. But overall, because I am very familiar with Mac OS, I can do Mac OS in my sleep almost. I can just type on it and it's great. But because I don't have that, that same amount of familiarity with the operating system, it's a little bit harder. Linux is a very good OS. and It's very thought out and laid out, and it does really well. But I'm still not comfortable in the Linux environment. And because of that, I'm going to have to say I'm always going to go with the Mac. This is a very good competitor to that laptop. But I'm going to say, to be honest, I'm still going to go back to the Mac. All right. That's about it. Peace.